Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about and shooting the Leica 3F that was kindly gifted to me by Arc and Arc if you're watching thanks very much what a gift. So like most of the cameras that get gifted to the channel I have to do a little bit of research on them first like most of us do. I'm no camera buff and I'm not a walking camera dictionary so I have to do a little bit of research to find out what I've got in my hands to shoot and in this particular one I've done a little bit of research online it's not hard to find. This one was made between 1950 and 1952. Obviously being Leica it's a German camera and I've never shot a Leica before. I've held one in my hands before but I've never been lucky enough to, to own one or go out and uh, uh, play with one. I don't think no one's ever trusted me with a Leica but well, here you go. Now the first thing I ever do when I get a new camera in my hands is I try and get around it without reading any instructions or going online and trying to find out what it does. Obviously we all know it's a camera, it's 35mm, it's a rangefinder, it's got shutter speeds, it's got an aperture. As long as I know how to load the film, unload the film, change the shutter, change the apertures, then I'm good to go. Any troubleshooting from there I can find out from the next and do some research myself and see what went wrong. But um, I've already shot this camera uh, a couple of times now on some test rolls and it's working perfectly. So um, I'll just quickly give you an overview around the camera, show you what I found out about it and then uh, we'll get out on the streets, take some pictures, have a look at the legs and see how it performs. So on the top of your camera you've got your advanced reel there for when you're advancing your frames, next to it is your shutter button, there's your shutter um, selector for your shutter speeds, there's a little tiny, I think it's a cold shoe, and there's the rewind knob as well for winding your film back. To wind the film back you've got to put it into a rewind position, at the moment it's in shooting position, you just switch that flick, uh, flick that switch over to rewind and you can rewind the film back after shooting. The trickiest part about this camera is loading the film which I found, which I found highly amusing when the first time I tried to load some film. If you look at the back of the camera, gotcha, you pull the little tiny lever off and then you take the plate out and then you're presented with this little tiny diagram that tells you to um, cut the film or make a long strip of film for about 10 centimetres such as like that, so you have to cut the film, um, the leader of the film, to get it inside the camera and get it onto the take-up spool which is sitting inside there, there's the take-up spool. I found that to be really tricky, I tried quite a few times <laughs> and I was more unsuccessful than I was successful with it. So uh, I decided to go online and I found some guy on YouTube that takes the lens barrel off itself, you can unscrew the lens, which means then you can just put a normal leader film inside the back of the camera and uh, when it's on the take-up spool you just look through uh, the back of the lens you can see the film against the curtain and you just adjust it accordingly you just got to be careful not to damage the curtain at all but if you're careful uh, it works pretty well and that's the way I've been loading and unloading this film this is a blank roll of film it's duff so I've been practicing with this um, and each time now I'm getting it bang on so I'm quite confident in loading the film that way uh, without damaging the camera uh, and also saving time because the first time around was a nightmare with this camera, you haven't got your normal lever that, you know, to advance or cock the shutter or advance the film. There's this dial here and you have to, there you go, like, like so. And as you're advancing the film, you've got your take-up spool that will go with it to make sure that will give you an indication that your film's loaded correctly. And also the shutter selector dial twists with it as well. And when you change your shutter speed, you have to make sure that the frame is advanced first and then you change your shutter speed. Also, this camera has got shutter speeds of one second all the way to one thousandth of a second. And on the shutter speed dial here, there's a little tiny number that says 25 to 1. And then if you want to change it less than 25th of a second, you've got this front dial here, which has got more. Um, but that's how you get to the slower shutter speeds, is by first selecting uh, the shutter speed at the top 25 to 1, and then using the front dial to go any slower. So if you want to do some long exposures, you have to advance your shutter first, select 25 to 1 on the, on the shutter dial on the top and on the shutter dial on the front, or the little tiny dial on the front, you set it to T for timed and then you, you uh, uh, press the button and then you can do your long exposures. The, the curtain is now open exposing the film until you flick the front dial to position 1 and it closes the curtain, obviously uh, stops the exposure, but you're going to get some shake, so I'd probably be more, be more inclined when I'm, if I'm doing any long exposures just to use a, a lens cap over the front, set it to time, open the uh, curtain, do my time, then put the cap back on 
and then take the time off. So there's a 50 mil lens on here and it's apertures are 3.5 to f22. And also on the lens is your focusing as well like so on there and a little tiny focus scale uh, your normal focus scale for your zone focusing or your or, or measuring your distances for focusing and also a range finder as well two little tiny holes at the back one is your your uh, range finder it's quite small um but it works quite well and also a very tiny viewfinder as well which is quite bright so you know, other than being an old camera, it works perfectly. I've already tried it out with some negs and it works perfectly. All the shutter speeds are working perfectly. It's pretty mechanically sound. So I'm quite happy with it. So that's the uh, Leica 3F. Let's go out and do some photographs and see what we can come up with. <laughs> So I've come down to the beach with the camera and a roll of the Street Pan 400 as well and I'm just going to take a few shots of these beach huts, a few beachy things, see what we can come up with. This is Jacob, my daughter's boyfriend, say hello Jacob. Hello. <laughs> He's going to hold the camera for me a couple of times, don't you? Yeah. Cheers mate. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm um, going to mill around here, try and get some photographs, I'll show you what I'm taking pictures of. I think one of the things I'm going to struggle with is uh, compositions because I'm not used to looking through this particular camera's viewfinder um, but I'll try and, and you know it's only practice makes perfect with the compositions I'm going to get with this how to use the viewfinder for the compositions I want so let's get on. So some of these beats arts make some interesting photographs so we'll try and uh, grab some then I've got the trusty light meter with me start off with this blue one here do a quick meter reading so it's giving me f16 1 25th of a second this camera's got um 100th of a second so let's advance the camera that's done change my shutter speed 100th of a second so it's a little bit brighter but that's okay f16 should get a good shot and of course when i'm advancing i'm just making sure that that's turning with it which means that the film is loaded correctly So I've just given Jacob the camera. I've showed him how to use the rangefinder, and he's looking at the moment to see if he can bring the uh, bring the camera into focus on this padlock. Okay, you got the? Uh, can you see the parallels coming? Okay. Is that in focus? Then do you reckon? I think so. Right. Okay. Then look at the other window, and that will give you a viewfinder, see so your composition. Yeah. And when you think you've got a nice composition, um, hit, the, hit the button at the top. So for just trying this camera out, I'm not looking for any draw dropping photography, I'm just looking for simple scenes to get used to the camera and also the range finder and the viewfinder, and of course to have a bit of fun as well, which I think is important sometimes not to take it all so seriously. So now what I'm going to do is make it easier for Jacob using the zone focusing. So I'm literally going to determine the distance um, you know, between we're going to shoot between so many meters and so many meters and in between that it should come out relatively uh, in focus so i need to set the barrel first and the lens for the zone focusing and then jacob don't have to worry about all that zone uh, all the um, uh, focusing through the range finder he can just click and shoot and enjoy it so i'll set you up if you don't touch the barrel i've set you up so anything you take a photograph of that's between 1.4 and 3 meters should pretty much be in focus so 1.43 meters that should be in focus there yep. starting to rain let's take cover just come behind this beach hut for a little bit of shelter <laughs> just wait for this drizzly rain to stop and we can carry on he's enjoying himself look he's got he needs his bucket and spade look, he's throwing a stone get some different angles Jacob go down on your knees or go down on your that's it yeah, you can get some up angles there you go So with the camera's lens now set at a range between 1.4 and 3 meters, I let Jacob loose to fire off some frames around the beach huts and it's quite interesting to watch him look for compositions as he's not a photographer and it just goes to show that you give anyone an interesting camera and they seem to enjoy it. For myself, I was just trying to get used to composing through the viewfinder for future reference and I found that after developing the negatives, my compositions were coming out as intended, which is great. 
I kept the exposure the same throughout the whole shoot and the light didn't really change and I developed the JCH street pan in Rodnell at one part to 25 and I don't think I'd use this combo for any scapes as the grain was pretty noticeable in the sky. That was total pants, it just started, but the heavens opened up and the rain came down, so we've just bolted and uh, got in the car. What did you, how did you think of finding, playing with that camera, Jacob? You're not a photographer and you don't really use cameras apart from your phone. Uh, difficult, but fun, I guess. Did you find it difficult? Yeah. What did you find, did what, trying to trying to uh, use the rangefinder? Yeah, trying to get, on to, especially on that white bit of paper. On that white bit of paper? Couldn't see it at all, yeah. You can't find it? No, I can't tell at all. Uh, look for that one. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was looking for. You'll, you'll see it. If you keep looking, you'll see it. So I can see it, I just can't tell... What? ...where the second vision thing is. Let's have a look. Yeah, they are tricky rangefinders, especially the older ones. Um, but it's no problem like we did. We just switched over to doing some zone focusing and uh, carry on shooting. But uh, it's all great fun. Just got to wait for this rain to stop and Jacob's going to take a few more, aren't you, Jacob? I am, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'm good. <laughs> So we carried on getting through the rest of the roll and there were times when I could see Jacob was shooting away from the light that we'd already exposed for. So a little quick nudge in the right direction and I think he started to get the point. Apart from the car wheel, I changed the aperture to f8 for a bit more light. So as you can imagine, I went in the dark room after I developed and dried the uh, negatives and made a few prints. That was one there that Jacob took of the sea. He was quite impressed with that one. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to give that to Jacob through the fruits of his efforts. And obviously, wouldn't be right if I didn't uh, print one of Jacob as well. That's for my daughter. I don't know whether she'll put that up in the room. Uh, that's come out all right. I like the way the bloke was just giving a little wave behind his head as he was walking past. And I actually shot that, hoping that this guy would be about here, but I misjudged it. But maybe I didn't because the guy was giving it some of that. I thought it made the picture. But uh, that's Jacob on the GoPro. And then uh, one of mine there, where you guys know I'm always looking for lines and different compositions. That was one uh, that I printed there as well. So I made three prints 
uh, from, from those negatives and that JCH street pan, like I said in my last video, I find that quite a punchy contrasty film. In the rod knoll produced a bit more grain, not than I expected, because I did expect it. So it's something that I wouldn't, uh, a combo I wouldn't use for any of my scapes. But uh, getting back to the Leica 3F, Wow, what a lovely camera this is. And if any of you guys have got the Leica 3F, let us know in the comments what you think of it, because I'd be interested to know. And also the way that I loaded it. I couldn't get on with cutting out the strip and sticking it in the back. So I went the other way around, and that seemed to work fine for me. But uh, as for the camera, it performed flawlessly. I couldn't fault it at all. It felt nice to shoot, and uh, it looks fantastic. You know, when you look at the, the design and detail that's gone into it, I think it's just a beautiful little camera, and it ain't that heavy either. I wouldn't say it's any more heavy than any of my other old uh, 1950s little tiny viewfinder or rangefinder cameras that I've got. But um, it's certainly, you can see it's certainly in a class of its own. It just looks nice. So I'm glad it works. I'm glad Arc sent it to me and I'm glad I can go out and shoot it and get some decent photographs. And the lens, that lens as well, man, that's as sharp as a tack. I'm not really one for fussing about sharpness and trying to get tack sharp images, but this lens actually does produce sharp images. So that was quite interesting to see. Anyway, guys, like I said, let us know in the comments if any of you guys have got the Leica 3F or have had it before and let us know your thoughts. I'd like to know. Thanks very much much everyone for watching hope you enjoyed the video i'll catch you next time